But let's uh, let's take a quick look, guys, at TSM. This is the first time I'm looking at this company from a just kind of free cash flow approach. And, well, this is... This is kind of why I've never done it before. So I got to be honest with you. I, I don't necessarily know how to evaluate it. So we got the ticket for TSM market cap of 923.5 billion. A PE of 37.22 is actually lower compared to all these other AMD 200 PE uh, companies. Um, not going to say any names though. Current price of $205.84. Again, if we take a look at this, we can see that this is up 126% on the one year and the year to date, nearly 100%, right? 97.92%. And we are near that 52 week high overall. So uh, if we take a look now back over here, we can see that they do pay out a dividend of $2.19, which is a yield of 1.17%, a pair ratio of 8.25, really tiny. The five-year CAG was only 6.5%. One consecutive year of dividend payment. If we take a look at that history, we can see that that's the reason why. They had it. Let's see. Oh, oh, okay. So they went from yearly to then quarterly, which is why they dropped it. So in reality, they didn't cut it. They just split it amongst easier to, you know, they just split it amongst quarterly. four. Yeah, quarterly. So that's not a big deal for me. And honestly, that's a downside of seeking off of that. It shouldn't count it as only one year. Uh, extended dates coming up on December 12th, and they do pay their dividends quarterly. And the next payout date will be on January 9th of 2025. So coming back over here, the amounts paid in dividends every single year based off of this uh, annual dividends per share is, look at that, Mike. 56 million. No. Oh, wait. Uh, sorry. Two to, no. Oh, that's a... Uh... 56 billion uh-huh okay i didn't see the millions on the left. so this Sorry. is so this is why i i don't understand this company and th th this has to do with the shares outstanding when you see those shares outstanding you're gonna be like what did you grab those right i did uh they're really interesting here's the thing right you look at the 10-year average free cash flow subtract this amount pays in dividends they're massively in the negative they're massively in the negative. And even for the current year's free cash or for the last year's free cash flow, it's still in the negative by roughly the same kind of margin. I don't understand this, right? There's just, a reason Warren Buffett sold them. Is it really? Did he had them? Yeah, I didn't know bought, he had them. He bought, he bought them and then two quarters later pulled a, ro a, a rope a dope and then sold it. Okay. I, I wasn't aware of that. Looking at the fundamentals, uh, they actually don't look bad. Right, they actually don't look bad. We got net income of eight billion dollars to one year ago of twenty-seven point three four billion dollars, increase of two hundred and forty-one percent increase. Drop here from two to one year ago. Aside from that, it's not looking too bad. What do you think? Okay, that's not. It's not. It's not like world shattering, but it's not bad, right? Like you kind of started when the whole AI thing started. Obviously, they started increasing because they're going to reap the benefit of that. Right and here. That's yep. I would even say four years ago it started. That's because, like, that's when R R NVIDIA started, like, with uh, Pascal and all that was four years ago. Okay, so what do you give early, us a grade? Early on. I'd say, like, 85. Yeah, I, I say roughly the same. I was going to give it an 80. Basically, just a solid solid B, right? Solid B yeah. minus. You know, I'm going to go with 85, yeah. It's a solid B. Like, it's not looking too bad, but it's not looking too good either. Uh, free cash flow is a little bit all over the place, but it's not, it's pretty cons consistent, question mark. We got 10 uh, years ago of $4.2 billion to one year ago of $9.52 billion, increase of 127%, with an average of $8.89 .8 billion. Again, it's choppy, but it's, I don't know. It's 50-50. Yeah. I, I honestly agree with that sentiment. Also 50%. Yeah. Because a lot has to do with... And let's face it, you chips can, aren't you going can make anywhere. An argument for both. What's you up? can make an argument. You can make an argument for both. Yeah. You can make an argument to the downside. You can make an argument to the upside. You can... Obviously, we know that chips aren't going anywhere, right? If anything, we'll continue to need them. Uh, and the fact that they are essentially a monopoly. Let's face it. TSM is a monopoly, right? Yeah. So... I get Intel's trying to like fight against that. No, Intel has a long way to go. Intel, Super Intel long way to like go. Fighting its way out of its grave. It's not even yeah. like fighting. 
Yeah. It's not in the ring. It's just fighting for its life at this yeah. point. Revenue is looking amazing. We got $24 billion to one year ago of 70.1, uh, sorry, $70.42 billion increase of 193%. Again, nice consistently increasing drop as of one year ago, but overall it is nicely increasing. What do you think? Yeah, well, same grade as before, 85. Really? Uh, it has, yeah, because it has the same shape to it. I'm going to give it a 90. I do like it a little bit more than that of the net income. Um, assets as a reference only, it is nicely increasing as well as the liabilities. But you can see that as of the trailing, the liabilities have actually come down a little bit. Uh, while the assets have actually gone up a little bit. So that's interesting right there, right? From 66.75 to 66.48 on the liabilities. And then 180, uh, 180, 21 or 180, 22 to 183, basically 184. So that's nice to see. And the assets minus liabilities is looking really good too, right? Really, really good. Average sold assets of 102.23 billion liabilities of almost 35 billion a difference of 67.24 billion dollars what do you think i think it's good saying i keep going back to it's a little this one's a little better than the net income slightly just because like the recency of the assets really determine it and you kind of like had a lull period five years ago against so that was coming around COVID time so mm -hmm. companies necessarily weren't spending money so for me it's i say a 90 90 percent i'm gonna go with 95 percent i do like this one a lot more so that was it's really really good right it's really really good uh cash flow minus the liabilities you guys can see that they did have instances of it going up but the liabilities really ramped up and also castle has just been kind of meh throughout the whole entire time so that's not really surprising to see that this is as of one year ago negative 57 billion dollars in the red and then the average being negative 23 billion. So I don't know what you would put for this one. I really don't give it a high importance because you're an AI company. You're going to just crank up debt, right? Not AI to, company. To they're not an AI company. They're, they're yeah, a chip company. Conductor AI, right? Like the, the whole thing. I, I go back to a 50 just because I don't know of how it's impacting the business necessarily. It can, it can be a split between not positive or negative. I'm personally going to give this like a 30%. It is massively in the red when it comes to this. And the fact that their cash flow is just not keeping up with this. It's a, it's a big problem for me. All right. Now, are you ready for this? You know what comes sure. next, right? Yeah, share is outstanding. All right. Are you ready for what you're about to see? Sure. First of all, you're, you're going to be very confused by A, the number, and B, the direction. Okay. Right. Okay. Three, two, one. Shares outstanding. So, the number, 25.9 billion shares outstanding. 25.9 billion with a B. Apple, actually, let's take a look at this really quickly. What is Apple's uh, shares outstanding? Let's see. AAPL. And the reason why I'm choosing Apple is because I know they have a lot of shares outstanding here. So if we take a look at Apple shares outstanding, we could see that they are uh, 23 billion. So, well, sorry, it was it was 2023 20, billion and now it's 15 billion. So technically right now, Apple has less shares outstanding than um, TSM. Yeah. As you can see, so 15 billion shares outstanding when it comes to Apple, while TSM has, as of today, $25.929 billion. So do you see the number here? As to what I'm referring to, uh, like why is interesting? You kind of just get, you just nope. stagnant. So, stagnant. so look at this: twenty five point nine two nine billion shares, twenty five point nine three nine three nine three. They kept it the same from nine years ago all the way to one year ago. <laughs> and then I they kind of like it for them. Yeah, right? they're they're like a foreign company, so it's like you. And then again, there could be some regulations involved with it, that right? Could of what be they too. can. And can so they can't necessarily like use that as like a leverage point but it gives you stability kind of knowing what and give, it's a, it gives you stability and an opportunity in the future to do stuff with it i do agree with that sentiment that it, this could be a regulatory situation uh like for example i know that one time i covered a chile a chilean company uh and i was just like i was just like they're not buying back shares they're constantly issuing I don't like it. And then somebody commented saying, hey, uh, it's because in Chile, it's illegal to buy back shares. I'm like, uh-huh, that makes sense. 
that makes sense. So this could be a similar thing, but I just love it because A, they're not diluting and B, they're not buying. So we're stagnant here. Yes, they did issue a couple 10 to nine years ago. And then from one year ago to today, they bought back a little bit, but honestly, it's the same. There's no difference here. So as a grade, I give it um, an 80 just because really? you're you're not you're not creating something bad necessarily, but you're not really doing like the traditional thing that we would expect from a company. So let me ask you a question. Berkshire Hathaway has the exact same graph. Would you still give it an 80? Yeah, no, because Berkshire does different things. Hang on a minute. But Hang on a minute, because you, that's kind of you, you can't. You can't do that, right? You kind of can't do that. There's a reason why I said that because I know for a fact Berkshire Hathaway doesn't issue any shares or buy back any shares. That's why the price is near $700,000 right now. Um, because I'll keep your grade as 80, but just understand that for me, I see this right here and it's absolutely gorgeous because I, I don't like issuing or at least if they issue for a reason, right? That's understandable. But the fact that they're just stagnant, it's fine. My main issue with this share sell standing is the fact that 25 billion shares or nearly 26 billion shares cannot cover that dividend. So I don't know where they're pulling this dividend from. It may be a Zim situation where they may pull their dividend from something else and not the cash flow being a foreign company, right? Because I know for a fact that Zim, they they base their dividends off of their income, off of their, uh, off of their earnings, right? Yeah. Maybe a similar situation. I'm not sure. So for me, I'm going to say 100%. My main issue is the dividend, but I don't know too much about where that dividend is coming from to begin with. So gotcha. long with the answer, 100% for me. <laughs> and lastly, Cash and Clones, they currently hold $55.32 billion with an average of $27.85 billion. Overall grade for me is 75% and for Mike, a 73%. We're pretty much in line with this. Now, the big issue is the price. The valuation. Now, the problem with this is the shares outstanding. $25 billion. I'm oh, sorry. 25 billion shares outstanding. It's a lot. It's a lot. So, um, what do you think the just kind of free cash flow says when it comes to valuation? Uh, $20 a share. Actually, you're very close. Um, it is showing. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem, right? And it's an AI, AI company, 10% rate of return. No, like minimum 30. Yeah. So you see, that's kind of the problem that we have here right now. Um, that, yeah, that's kind of the problem. Um, $6.37 across the board that I just seen for debt and that I just seen for debt, 15 bucks. The price is currently, as you guys can see right there, $205.84. This is where I'm like, I don't know. So we could make some assumptions. Mike, would you like to make some assumptions? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, and by the way, that was with the 10%. Sorry. Without the required rate of return of 10%, we got $17.62 and adjusting for debt, $37.38. So, okay. Revenue in the past 10 years has increased at an average, and the revenue has been very consistent, um, has increased at an average 14.13%. So what do you think? 14, 16, 18. Really? You yep. want the lowest and to be 14. Yep. Okay. 14, 16. At least you're not going, you know, by massive chunks. You're only going by around 2% up. So that's good. And zero across the board. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I do agree with that one. And now for the required rate of return. Oh, 30. It's gonna make you're it an AI it's gonna, company. It's going to make it pennies. Yeah. It's going to make it pennies. You, you, you yeah, understand right. this, right? With a 30%, yeah. yeah. 10 bucks. Yeah. There you go. So even, even if you, okay, so do the S and P do 10, if you do 10%, but, right. But, but wait, wait, be, before I do that though, this is why I just don't know. The reason why these numbers are so low is because of that $25 billion in shares of 25 billion shares outstanding. This is that, right? So I don't, this is why I don't like doing foreign companies because of the regulation. I don't know what's happening with it. I don't know why they've kept their shares all standing like this. I just don't know. So what you want me to put 10% for the required rate of return? Yeah. 40 bucks. 
right? $39.87 on, on the low end to 50, 54 bucks on the high end. I, I, I just don't understand it. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to say, I just don't understand. The fundamentals look good, all except for kind of the free cash flow. The fundamentals look good, but valuation, I just don't know where to put it. I just don't. It's probably because you have a high weighting for the share um, shares outstanding. And if there's some regulation, right, it kind of nulls and voids it. Maybe. Maybe. And how they and also like we said how they pay out stuff and all that. So right. Right. Um so yeah, guys, that essentially does it for the company uh TSM. So tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you guys think. Oh, wait, one more thing, obviously. With this dividend, we can see that if we input six thousand or if we we, we buy six thousand two hundred and fifteen dollars worth of this company. This nets us thirty point one nine shares, which is about sixty six dollars and twelve cents per year. So not a lot, right? It's only a one point whatever, one point one seven, one point two uh, percent. So not really that high, but yeah, that's essentially uh, the company TSM. So I don't know. Tell me what you guys think uh, in the in the on the live chat or in the comment section below. Uh, because I'm very curious about uh, as to what why people um, like this company or not, right?